The CDC is asking physicians nationwide to be on the lookout for severe cases of hepatitis in children. Nine cases have been reported in Alabama, two in North Carolina, 84 cases in the UK, and Israel reported a dozen. Dozens more in Denmark, Spain, and the Netherlands. Joining me on The Morning Show, Dr. Jeffrey Goldhagen, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Florida College of Medicine and Chief of the Division of Community Pediatrics. Good morning. Appreciate you joining us. Good morning. Thanks for the opportunity. This is a bit of a mystery because it seems all of the usual hepatitis viruses have been ruled out. What may be at play here? Anything to explain the surge? Well, it appears as if it may be what's called an adenovirus, actually an adeno-41 virus. Uh, that's been found in many of the children. What's critically important is this is not secondary to COVID vaccines. This is happening primarily in children from one to six years of age. They are not eligible for the vaccine. And a study in the UK demonstrated that, in fact, none of the children who actually came down with the hepatitis uh, actually or immunized. So this is not due to the COVID vaccine. It could, however, be secondary to COVID infection itself. Some of the kids in particular in the UK actually were infected. Uh, that's really unclear, complete speculation at this point, but it is not secondary to the COVID vaccine. So let's talk about the symptoms that moms and dads should find suspicious and maybe decide, all right, it's time to call the doctor. Right. Well, uh, hepatitis uh, can be mild or it can be severe. Uh, it generally presents with abdominal symptoms, abdominal pain, diarrhea, vomiting, uh, can also have a fever. Uh, and then the signs of jaundice uh, appear as the disease progresses. Um, it's really important to know that at least as of now, as far as I know, there are no cases in Florida at this point in time. There's uh, no reason to be overly concerned, but parents should, in fact, uh, uh, monitor their children. And if they're concerned, talk to their pediatrician. So the CDC issued a health advisory. Is there reason to believe that this issue may spread? Uh, we see these uh, kind of uh, e examples uh, periodically. There's no reason to expect it to spread significantly. However, there's no reason not to. That's why the advisory was issued and people need to be uh, just cautious and again, report any suspicious symptoms to their pediatrician so this can be monitored. Um, there's relatively few children around the world who have been infected thus far and none that I know of in Florida and, and in Jacksonville. You mentioned the symptoms. If it does surface, pretty treatable? Uh, well, hepatitis is the symptoms are treatable, but the disease actually is not. Uh, the kids that have been uh, infected here in the U.S., two of them have actually gone on to require liver transplants. None of them have died. Uh, the disease spectrum can be very mild. In fact, uh, hepatitis B, many children actually have the disease and don't, don't, don't know it. Uh, so it, co it crosses the spectrum of severity. I would not be overly concerned if I were a parent at this point, but I would be cautious and observant. So hepatitis refer refers to inflammation of the liver. If it's left untreated uh, and, and it becomes a problem, how serious can things get? Well, um, it can be very serious. As I mentioned, uh, there are at least two children that I know of that require liver transplants. Uh, the other children have had significant illnesses, uh, but uh, those have resolved. And so it's nothing to, uh, um, nothing to take lightly by any means. But again, um, I would be appropriately cautious, but not overly concerned at this point. Look, when it comes to our children's health, you never want to take chances because they are our future. Dr. Jeffrey, they go take it. Always appreciate it. Thank you your very time. much. Have a great day. Pleasure's mine.